morning and welcome to Coffee with the Sarlos. I'm Kelly. Good morning. I'm Karen. We are officially in the month of March. That is super exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, we have our Evening with Medium events coming up in April on the 24th, as well as August 28th and December 4th. Mm-hmm. Tickets are on sale at the website by sarlo.com, so make sure to grab those before they're gone. Mm-hmm. We have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. Those are 10 to 15 minute shows. There are five in a series on emotional and spiritual intelligence. They air the first week of every single month, and there is also an archive of those shows. On the website by sarlo.com, we give you the first show each month. Then the remaining four shows are on a site called patreon.com, and we are at backslash by Sarlo. Now, Kelly has downloaded some of those series on the website um, that you can go to if you want to see what a series of five looks like. So you can go and do that. And remember, when you're on our website and you want to listen to one of our shows, you do have to pick the way that you want to listen to it. You can't just click on the video or on that post. You have to go to play it on Google or play it on iTunes, whatever your platform is. Yeah. So you have to pick your your platform. Yes. Okay. So I know that gets longer and longer, but some people don't know how to do it. No, you're right. And yeah. some people will just listen on the website and some people will go straight to YouTube and watch the videos there. So you do have lots of options on how to access us. It's just about how you prefer or what you have access to that day. I, I go to YouTube and then I throw it up onto my TV with Chrome. Oh, we're going to get so many questions. Well, it's okay. Yeah. People do email us questions and I either call them or I email them back and, and try and explain so that they can have access. Cool. Okay. Um, And then that also kind of leads us into just thanking everyone for however you got here today. If you're listening early because you're on patreon.com, you have early access to these videos and these podcasts. So thank you for joining us and supporting Mm -hmm. us. And if you're listening Saturday or after with the general public, thank you again for your interest and your support. Um, In any way that you can, wherever you're listening from, if you can take the time to like, share, comment, review, post, whatever your buzzword is that, you know, makes sense to you, we appreciate how you share us with your your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah. Oh, and personal sessions, our actual business. Um, (laughs) If you want to get a hold of us for your personal sessions, we do those all over the world via Skype, FaceTime, telephone, and or Zoom. Um, So you can contact us directly uh, and WhatsApp. Pardon me, Karen is correcting me as we as we go here. Um, good? Yeah. Okay, so let's dive into today's show. All right, sounds good, Kelly. Um, I'm going to start by reading uh, some of the thank yous that have come through recently. Oh, okay. So we've been doing that re- um, lately in the shows. Just saw my first show, Coffee with the Sarlos, and I had to sit down and really listen. You two actually listen to people. You listen to our spirit our gu- and our guides. You listen. Thank you. And that's by Vanessa. Nice. Thank you for sharing these stories. It is truly inspiring. Now, this is a, this is a fan. This is a fan. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm going to qualify that Michelin M. Oh. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say Michelin is a fan, and she deserves to be called out because or acknowledged because she's literally responding to the shows. Yeah. And it, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's so appreciated. But we put quite a bit of work into these shows. Yep. Um, with content and then also editing and producing. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely just to even get a simple line Mm -hmm. saying this is inspiring. Yeah. Um, That leads me to another kind of uh, little tidbit is that if you are listening and you're signed up for Patreon, um, you've probably downloaded the Patreon app and you're logged into your account. If you are getting dings of our new content at 5.30 in the morning when it's all scheduled to go out... You need to go into your phone settings or your iPad settings and actually turn off the notifications for Patreon. Um, It'll still download everything at the time it's supposed to, but you can actually control whether or not you are alerted to the new new content. So let's say thank you to Susan R., Mm -hmm. who notified us that she was being awakened at 5.30 in the morning on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and, I mean, some people are like, oh, take your phone out of the bedroom. She's on call. So she has to keep her phone near her. This is is an actual necessity. Right. Um, But like any app, you can go into your settings and turn off notifications. Thank you for telling people that. So maybe if people hear that they do have some little glitches with how things are working, that we do respond when you call us or email us. Well, yeah, we want it to work seamlessly for you. We really do. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is going to be all about a session today. Okay. And and I, you know, sometimes I say it was a half hour, it was this, it was that. If I remember correctly, this session was about 90 minutes. I think it was an hour and a half. And there's, there's quite a bit in it, and she gets different areas. So if somebody thinks, oh, I only like the shows that are with medium, hang in there. <laughs> if I only like the shows with past lives, or how come they're not doing more of those? Hang in there. We have a little bit um, of a few things today. And that is exactly what people get when they see us, as opposed to, oh, I thought you were just mediums. Oh, I thought you just did psychic work. I thought you just looked into a crystal ball, which we don't. We don't, we don't look into a crystal ball. Um, I can if you want me to. I just won't it, see anything. <laughs> I might screw with your head, but <laughs> which would so be our sense of humor. <laughs> hey, if it makes you feel better, if I look into a ball, I can do that. Well, you know what, Kelly? We have a crystal ball in the house. It's just a doorstop. I know. I think that's so funny. Um, it's and that's not out of rudeness. That that's just out of the fact that well, you improvise. We just don't know how to use it. That's not how our gifts work. Well, it was also put away, and mm-hmm. then we have a laundry door that just sort of swings closed all the time. <laughs> so it just made its way because Karen was innovative, and just I thought it made a nice doorstop. It's pretty. It is pretty. Okay, so what do you want to name this client? So we keep confidentiality. What do you want to do, Ella? I love that. Okay, so Ella booked 90 minutes, and um, geez, Kelly, I don't even recall because these are just in notes now, but why don't we preface it by saying that this could be in person by Skype, uh, FaceTime, Zoom, or WhatsApp. And I'm going to say that because I can't remember all the details to say if it actually could be a phone call or not. Um, Okay, so... After we move through consent, Ella it, uh, notifies me that she just wants an open session. And I try to explain to her that that means the guides will give her whatever the hell they want. And she looks at me and she goes, yeah, okay. And I said, so Ella, this isn't what Karen wants. Like, this is something we have to explain to people because for some reason, some people think we are making the decision when they don't. And if we don't give them what they want, we're wrong. Instead of understanding, no, that's what the guides picked. It doesn't make us wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I had a doodle page in front of me, and I just refer to it as just doodling because it's not note-taking for anybody. And um, the guide said, write down relationships, past lives, and medium. No, medical intuitive medium. And I said, okay. So I I wrote those down on the page, not knowing where I'm going or if I'm going to get them done, but I've got 90 minutes. So I'm thinking probably could get through all of that. And I showed her the page and I said, "Um, does this look right to you? And she just kind of giggles. And I said, oh, is that, is that okay? Or do you want me to take anything off? Because even though it's an open session, you might look at what the guides want and you might disagree. So I'm giving you an opportunity to look at this. And she goes, no, it looks accurate. Okay. She goes, it's, I'm giggling because I was told to come in here and say open, but that you would know. And I said, okay. And I said, I don't always though. I would like you to know that. I said, but I'm, I'm super glad that the guides have their shit together today mm-hmm. <laughs> for you. So I said, do I do it in the order they've given it to me or do you want to choose an order? And she said, no, I'm, I'm honestly going to go open and let you tell me what they want me to know. And I said, okay, let's start with relationships. So the guides came in and said, uh, or, or pardon me, Kelly, as you know, but where I'm explaining for the public, they explain it, I hear it, I feel it, and I also get to have inner knowings to try to explain. So it's kind of like watching a TV or a movie, but everything being downloaded so fast that we don't have a minute. We Sometimes we even get less than that in order to get all of the messages in. Oh, sometimes I'm starting to talk as the message is still coming in. Yes. I it, it does not come in in complete um, format. That's right. So if somebody's thinking, how do you do this? The short answer... And By the, the seat of our pants. I was just going to say, I have no idea. 
That works too. <laughs> okay, good. So, because it's just downloaded. Mm-hmm. You have to trust it. So I said, well, I said, the guides are saying that your husband and you have uh, different senses of urgency. Mm-hmm. That was very gentle. <laughs> And she goes, I don't know what that means. And I said, oh, that's fair. I said, let let me ask the guides for more information. I do know what it means, but I need to understand what they mean for you so that I can explain it. So I just took another moment, and then I launched into it. And I said, well, I said, your sense of urgency is different in when to get things done. And she goes, yeah, okay, keep going. Do you have, like, examples? I'm a little bit lost, but I... I think I might be understanding what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to give an example of two things. One, I said, first of all, do you have a husband? Is that correct? And she goes, yeah. And I said, and you have children. I said, you have three. And she goes, yeah. And I said, and there are pets in the house that you refer to as your fur babies. And she goes, yes, that's very correct. We always say we're a house of five kids. And I said, okay. So I said, you're... Your husband's sense of urgency in responding to when there's a need for your children is at a zero. He just doesn't respond. He just pretends it's not happening. He'll continue to watch TV. He'll continue to play a game. He may, if he gets up to a one, yell instructions from his chair, but then say he's not yelling. So if they're in another room of the house or down the hall, or in the basement, and you're in the kitchen working, or you're with the baby, and the other two are downstairs, and maybe maybe they're not, I'm not even saying that they're fighting, Kelly, I'm just saying that there's a sense of urgency for something, and that could be that maybe they're getting too loud, or they're not doing what they were told, or their friends are over, whatever, right? It's just a variety of things, that if he sees you go up a notch, he just waits. He ga- he gauges you. He watches and listens to what you do. And if you're a one or a two, he doesn't interfere. But if you hit around a seven, he yells. Still won't move. Just yells. And she goes, yeah, this is so true. And I said, um, and then over time, because this has been over years, the dogs could have an accident. He doesn't move. He tells you they've had an accident. So his sense of urgency is really, truly a zero, but he instigates or inflates your sense of urgency. Me using verbal abuse. Yes. By pointing out a useless statement. That's right. He will just make statements. He doesn't ask you to do anything. He thinks he's being a good husband because he's not telling you what to do. He's not asking you. He's not putting it. He, and so he even says those things like, well, I never told you to. Well, did I ask you? And so it was very important the way the guides worded this Mm -hmm. because she was not aware of that. It was happening, but she wasn't aware. So her lack of emotional intelligence in that means that his is higher in the sense that he's aware of the abuse and he's totally fine doing it. Well, yeah, and he's got to be aware of her level of anxiety because he's playing... He's playing into it, so she will act and will respond, so yes. he doesn't have to. Can you imagine having someone yeah. who only elevates themselves to a sense of urgency of one mm-hmm. if you get to a seven? Oh, no, and if he, even if she gets to a 10, he's not doing it. <laughs> Poke you in the eye. <laughs> okay. So he, if she goes up to a 10, then he yells, then he loses his temper, then he threatens, but he doesn't, re- he doesn't move. He still won't move. And so he will say, I'm busy, even if it means I'm busy playing a game, even if it means I'm busy. Um, I'm busy not caring. I, yeah, just whatever. Uh, I'm busy watching the baby, meaning uh, the baby's in a chair and can't move. I could go downstairs, but I'm not moving. I'm watching. Oh, let's move on. No, no, it's all, it's, it's, <laughs> I know you're annoyed, but people listening need to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and that's why I chose this one because this does occur because this is where she now goes into a work environment and coworkers understand that she has a very high level 
of a sense of urgency. So coworkers and bosses just don't do the job. She will, even if it's not her job. And so the Can bosses we- then expect her to do other people's jobs because her sense of urgency can get triggered. So now they're using that. I was just going to say, can we reword it and call it take advantage of? Totally. And so now she is at the place of looking for a leave of absence from work for stress, not understanding that the stress levels at work are justified. So she could walk into a doctor's office, describe everything truthfully, and totally deserve a stress leave because of the level of of, of abuse by the bosses and all of her coworkers, but she didn't understand that it originated in her marriage. She didn't understand that um, the husband, oh, this will come through later. So she doesn't understand that it originates at home and that if she doesn't deal with it there, which she's not dealing with it at all, other than to complain, other than to get brick-walled by him, So she will approach him and say, I'm in the kitchen watching the baby and cooking dinner. Can you not stop playing the game to get downstairs to take care of the kids? He he will say yes and then continue to play the game for 10 more minutes, yelling at the kids. And if she comes out of the room, he'll just start to take the controller and walk towards the stairs until she hits like a 12 and a 13. And I don't even know how high you can go with all of this shit, but... Heart attack. Well, (laughs) which is why she wants to go to a doctor because she has symptoms that come with anxiety levels of the racing heart and chest pain. She has a lot of symptoms and is not understanding why she's putting on weight in the Mm. belly area and in her hips And then her husband makes comments about that she's not attractive anymore. And I know the 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 cycle of abuse is terrible because it's just that he's instigating quite a bit of it because he abuses and then brick walls her in conversations. So when I say to her, he brick walls you, she goes, I don't know what you mean. And I have to actually explain the 15 forms of abuse to her. Mm -hmm. And when I start listing them, she asks me, can you explain that one? What do you mean diverting? What do you mean withholding? What do you mean forgetfulness? Forgetfulness is a form of abuse. She doesn't understand any of the 15 at all. So she's given resources to understand those. So I just do a brief when she asks me a question, give her the resource, give her the example for that form of abuse, and she's able to sit there and go, I, I, I'm so grateful you're explaining it. And I said, why is that, Ella? And she says, well, partly because I'm understanding the origin of my problem if, if, and, and the fact that it's in my home and my job. So even if I ask for a stress leave, I'm not going to come out of this problem unless I actually come out of my marriage or my husband changes. And she says, and my understanding from talking to my girlfriends and some of my brothers who've gone through divorces is that you can't make your partner change. She says, so I'm also now aware that he is aware of what he's doing. He's purposely doing all of these things because he has control over me. And I said, yeah, and she says, and I said, the guides are saying that he confuses you with three words. It's that easy. It's just that easy. Imagine three words being that easy to control another human being, a full-grown adult. Three magic words, I love you. And so that keeps her entrapped where she feels confused about what love is then. And, I, and she just looks at me and I said, before you say anything, Ella, I said, the guides want me to tell you right off, I'm no psychiatrist, but I'll say it right off the top, that is not love. And that's a message from your guides. You can go to therapy to figure that out, but that's what the guides are telling you. That's not love, that's abuse. And love and abuse are not one and the same. They're actually opposites. And you've confused the two as meaning the same thing. 
So that was the first part of her session. And so she got resources and some clarity. She got to ask questions. And she got some answers. So she then asked me to stop. She said, that's all I can take for that one today. And Mm -hmm. I said, no problem. You're in control. When you say the word stop, the guides and I stop on a dime. So what do you need? And that's the question. What do you need? And I know both of us ask our clients that frequently. So she sat for a little while and she said, I'm just going to let you go open to one of the other topics again. She said, because I don't know what to say. So I said, okay. I went on to medical intuitive and got her permission for that. And she said, yes. And I want to say that particularly Kelly, when we go on to medical intuitive, that we ask for permission again. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, because people, then this is not an insult. I completely understand this. People Mm -hmm. don't know what they're consenting to, Mm -hmm. even after we explain what medical intuitive is. Mm -hmm. And and when we say, you know, we see inside the body like a cat cat scanner and x-ray, people can go, oh, yes, please do that. And that's great. But sometimes when you go ahead and reword and say, oh, I'm in your chest cavity, oh, I'm in your, and you're explaining where you're actually doing energy and where, like what cells you're in, Mm -hmm. um, people get freaked out by that for whatever their own belief system is, or they get freaked out by the wording to think that something could be inside their body. Um, they, they seem to start getting like panicked about it. So I will even say like, I'm, I'm in the butt muscles. That's the pelvis is a very... Mm -hmm. interesting one. And people are like, what? Like I'm doing energy healing in this part of your body. Are you okay if I say it like that? And you see them hesitate and think like, am I? I want the healing. I don't necessarily know what they mean by they're in it, Mm -hmm. but I, but I, I want what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's, there's, um, an annoying amount of consent. And I say annoying because I think when people really don't know what consent is, the question over and over again can sometimes actually annoy the client. Mm. And we have to say, we need to check in because you may leave and feel angry after the fact when you hear she was in my pelvis. Yeah. She was in my chest. Yeah, I like how She was in my head. Yeah, I like how you've worded that to explain it, that they're the ones that can be annoyed. I think some people might have heard you say that and think you were the one annoyed. No. No, my God, no. I've had so many people... I shouldn't say so many. I've had a select few people rage about the fact that I was in their pelvis, hmm. even after two or three questions of consent, hmm. because however they spun it in their head afterwards made them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you for explaining that. Mm-hmm. So in Medical Intuitive... Uh, The guides explained that her adrenal glands were fatigued and had been fatigued her whole life. Mm -hmm. And that um, through dating and the marriage, and then how things had changed in her job to get worse over the years as the marriage got worse, and as he escalated the abuse, that the she changed in the work environment where it permitted more abuse. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'll say... You know, somebody might think, what do you mean she permitted abuse? Well, she never set a boundary. She never stopped it. She never spoke up for herself. She didn't challenge it. She didn't educate herself. She didn't read. She didn't go to therapy. There are tons of resources and places Mm -hmm. where we can learn to stop abuse. And, and, And I really hope people heard when I said, you can go to therapy to learn how to stop being abused. That is what therapists are trained to do. So anyway, we went into the adrenal glands, cortisol, and uh, thyroid. And she just kind of snapped up when I said thyroid. And I said, oh, I said, "Uh, am I in the right area? And she said, you sure are. And I said, "Um, are you also having problems with sleep? And she said, yes, I am. What's that got to do with any of this? And I said, well, I said, I'm going to let a naturopathic doctor, and a medical doctor explain all of that to you. And I said, because as far as I can see, your guides would like you to go to both. Hmm. And I said, they want the naturopathic doctor to be able to do what they can. 
And I said, but as far as I can see, you're going to need your medical doctor as well. Mm -hmm. So she goes, well, can't you just do it? Can't you just tell me? And I said, no. <laughs> no, I can't. I can do so much as an intuitive and I can do so much as an energy healer. That does not mean we replace other people. Oh my gosh, no. Because we, I mean, we have no medical training. We could hear, no, uh, use whatever one of the senses to hear exactly what prescription they need, but we can't write it. And if they walk into a doctor's office and say, my intuitive told me I need yeah. this, they're going to be like, I'm going to do my own assessment. Uh, yes, and they should. That's their job. So the most you can get from us at that point is an affirmation. That's correct. Because someone else has to administer those 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 um, yeah. prescriptions. Yeah, and I said, um, you need both of them because they're going to help you with some things that are the same issue, and you're going to be given choices as to whether to use natural remedies or medicated. And I said, the guides want you to have that option. They want, they want that presented to you so that you actually have the right to take care of yourself and to talk to the two professionals and to share with both of them what the other professional is saying so that the medical doctor can sit there and say, okay, I've heard of those options. Yeah, we can give that a try. And if that doesn't work for you, come back and we can try the prescription. Mm -hmm. So come back in two weeks and let me know how that goes for you. So she has the opportunity here to have a team take care of her. I was just going to say, I really love that this yeah. is the first, first opportunity that she has at having a team. Yes. That will work to be on her side. Yes. And this is part of what the message was in this aspect, Kelly, because I, the guides came through and said that the husband would not support the naturopathic doctor because it would mean paying for it and would support the medical doctor because where they live, this would be covered under a health plan. So it would just simply mean... I don't have to be involved. It's not going to be money out of my pocket. And and I don't mean that they can't afford it. They can. And they can afford the naturopath. They are in a financial situation to afford all of it. He's just going to have reasons as to why they can't afford the naturopath. He's going to make them up. Mm -hmm. And then when that doesn't work and she actually just goes, he's going to make her pay for it, so to speak. Like, that's going to come out of your pocket, not mine. Or he will do things like, well, he's not going to say this to her, but if he's been wanting to buy a new bike, he's going to buy the bike because now you're going to a naturopath. If he wants a new video game, he'll go out and buy the video game. What a winner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, I, okay. Well, I'm just, I just, I'd like to get through the rest anyway. of it. But that came up in the conversation. And I said, the guys would like you to be aware that this is a pattern he does in order to sabotage you from taking care of yourself so that your needs are not met and therefore you need him. That's fucked up. That's not even logical. It's not logical, but it works. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Because if, if you can confuse them enough, logic doesn't have to be there. Okay. So moving on to the next one. She says to me, um, do you have anything, is, like, is that it for the medical intuitive? And I said, yes. Do you have any other medical things you actually want me to look at? And she goes, no. She goes, that's good. So I told her I had past lives next and she, she was interested in that. So one of her sons stepped forward the oldest and uh, of all of her children, and said, I had a past life with my mom. And so I asked her, I said, would you be interested in knowing about a past life with your oldest son? And she says, I would. She goes, really? And I said, well, yes, you can have past lives with the people in your family or, or coworkers or the people that you know, um, as well as with strangers. And I said, I'm just going to say whatever he gives me. And she goes, okay, you do that. And I'm going to explain in a minute why. So he came through and said, well, I was, I was married to my mom in a past life. He says, and I was just like my dad. And I'm like, what? And he goes, my mom's in a pattern. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. And what about it, honey? And he goes, well, he goes, I'm 
12 years old. And he says, I'm the one in her current lifetime that points out when my dad's being a dick to her. And I'm like, oh, shit. He goes, so I'm in this lifetime watching my dad and mom go through this, where I've been my father before. I've done these behaviors. He says, and so I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for my mom. I want her to break the pattern. He says, so when dad's doing something, I will say to dad, like, you're supposed to change the baby's diaper, you know, mom asked you. Um, or if he's still on the video game and he's in the room and he walks into the kitchen and she says, honey, to her husband, um, I've asked you three times to do something. Have you got it done? And he goes, yep, mm, on it, or something like that, vague, with a mo- multiple answers, like, yeah, I've done it, I'm on it. All confusing, right? So I'm giving you more than one answer, which again is brick walling her, so that she emotionally doesn't know where to go in her brain to make the next step in the conversation. Her 12-year-old son will walk up to her and say, he hasn't done anything, he's been sitting on his ass in the living room. So... In this lifetime, her son isn't part of that abuse and is trying to help his mom come out of it. But he says to me, I'm only going to try for so long. Yeah, I'm done with this. I'm 12. He says, when I hit 13, I am so done with my mom and dad. And he's breaking his own patterns. Yeah. So be a part of the contract or don't. You got it. Yeah. So I said, I explained this to Ella. And she said, well, she says, I would have to say you're, you're very correct about my son's behavior. She says, and I appreciate you telling me this because there are times, as you can well imagine, where her son will tell the truth and the dad punishes him for it. Go to your room. You don't get this. He's punishing his son for being truthful. And I said... You need to know this so that you can understand what this is doing to your son Mm -hmm. and the consequences that could go on for the rest of their lives in a contract, how it will affect him and his siblings, how it will affect you and him because he's losing all respect for you. And you're his, you're his mom. You're the female figure in his life. And at 12 years old, he is fast losing respect for women. And she says, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't he be losing respect for his dad? Oh, I said, because he's never had any. He's not losing it. He's never had any respect for his father. Mm -hmm. So I said, you have a child here who could easily turn 13, 14, uh, or through teenage years and want to have nothing to do with the two of you. Get into trouble to get out of the house, whatever. So... That was the past life. And so she says to me, oh, sorry, Kelly, you took a breath there. Well, I was just going to say, like, an an alternative is that he may hold on to the lessons he's trying to get as a 12-year-old and grow up and find a great woman or or male partner, pardon me, just a partner, and pull away from his family because they've got good boundaries. They're a good family. They are a good unit. And he's doing better and doesn't want to associate with his family anymore. Yeah. Yes. And I think it's lovely that you've pointed out how healthily that solution could come to fruition for the son. Mm -hmm. But in the process, she's now looking at the possibility possibility, um, that she could lose that child. Mm -hmm. And it has everything to do with the fact that the two parents aren't dealing with the situation. Mm -hmm. It's just a day-to-day drill. Yeah. And she thinks the problem is at the job and that if she gets a stress leave, she'll be able to stay home and it's going to somehow get better. And I bet you she can't explain why she doesn't even want the stress leave. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she doesn't want to go home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she can't even really put her finger on things. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the, the, the... Beautiful things that the session did was to put its the finger right on that this is the issue. You can go to therapy. Mm-hmm. The guides didn't come in and say, you're done. Marriage over. 
It said, here are options. You could educate yourself, but you can't fix him. You could educate yourself, oh, your yin-yang. And if he wants to continue to brick wall you and use those forms of verbal abuse and gaslight you and everything else he's doing, emotionally blackmailing your son, all of these things, um, that she can get an education, but she can't change him. So she has to figure it out. And she's going to need help to do it. Mm -hmm. So then um, we went through resources. We went through being able to talk about therapy and books and counseling online. If she, again, people have heard she has finances to be able to do things. So she can, she can afford to buy a book or sit and listen to something on YouTube. So when she says something to me, like, I'm so busy, I don't have the time, I have three kids and a job. That's when the guys come in and say, bullshit. You can download a podcast and listen to it in the car. You can wear your headphones. You have two 15-minute breaks and a one-hour lunch at work. You have car time where once the kids are all dropped off, you actually are in the car by yourself. You get groceries by yourself. You actually go to the gym. You could be listening at the gym by yourself. Well, I want to listen to my music. And it's like, mm, that's where we're saying... I have a choice. Whether, like, yes, that you have choices. And that if you're willing to sabotage, that's where your partner is looking at you going, well, we both know you're sabotaging and mm -hmm. I'm getting away with it. So, so let's get peace on Friday night. Focus on that. So you, he'll throw little things in for focus. That's it. Nothing big. Mm -hmm. So we left it at that. And then she said, okay, got about 15 minutes left. And I said, okay, what do you want to do? And she goes, I want the medium one that you said at the bottom of the page. So she ended up in medium. She got her mom and two grandmothers. So I said, I got three women coming through for you. And she said, yes. And she was so happy. And I said, um, they're saying, oh, one of the things that came through, I just remembered, one of the things that came through in that was that the two grandmothers walked in together. And I said, I don't understand, but it's almost like they're glued together. Like they were making it comical, like that they were stuck together. And she goes, oh, I don't know what that means. And I said, well, I don't either. I said, but they're doing it in kind of a funny way. So I'll just let that go and I'll move on. And then I saw blankets and I said, did all three of them make you blankets? And she said, yes. And I said, I can't make out if there's two blankets or one blanket or three. I'm super confused <laughs> because they're showing me three blankets, but I can't see three blankets. It changes to two. And I said, I don't get it. And I said, do they take two blankets and sew them together? I said, but wouldn't that be weird? Wouldn't that just make it like one great big long blanket? Mm -hmm. I just could not make it out. And she goes, no. She goes, but you're right. She said, my mom made me one blanket, and that's folded on the end of my bed. She says, my grandmother's made me each a blanket. And she said, and recently, I took it to a seamstress who put the two back to back. Mm. And the seamstress sewed them together around the, the edges. And then she put a border on it that had a color that matched both sides of the blanket so that mm -hmm. whichever way you had it, like... It's reversible. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Reversible blanket, which is such a good idea. Yeah. Oh my God. I just loved the idea of it. So anyway, she said, she described that and she goes, what color? And I couldn't see the color that day. I just saw so many colors <laughs> of the blankets and there were three and... I, I didn't want to just start guessing colors because yeah. I could see different ones. And that's when you lose clients sometimes because if you don't get it like spot on. That wasn't enough that three blankets became two? Well, you, no, you you know, like she, anyway. <laughs> so I ended up giving her, I think it was like a purpley blue color. And she said there was purple and blue on the blankets. Mm -hmm. 
And I said, as long as those are the colors on the two grandma's blankets, I'm okay. Like I, I'm still, you know, comfortable. But I was comfortable with the message anyway. Um, on my part, I know mm-hmm. sometimes clients don't get to being comfortable with the message, but there's nothing I can do about that. All I can do is tell them what I get with accuracy. So anyway, so the grandmothers came in and talked about the, 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 how they made these blankets for her out of love and how her children were using the blankets. Um, and that, And this is what they said. If she chooses to leave her husband to make sure she takes the blankets with her. And I didn't, I, that's all I could say, because it wasn't about going in and trying to convince her to. That was not their intention. Mm-hmm. It was simply that these were her, her blankets and they wanted them to stay with her. Then her mom came in and said, I'd like to finish the session. I want to be the last one. And um, she's going to like that. She says she wants, she wants me. And I said, oh, okay, Lynn, let's end with you, Mom. And she says, I want to say that I'm so sorry that I made her the people pleaser that she is. And that my whole intention was that if she was a good person, she says, I didn't mean for her to be a people pleaser. I just always wanted her just to be a good person. And I said, did you understand boundaries? Did you understand no? And she goes, no. She goes, and I'm so sorry because she doesn't really understand now at work that no is healthy and that that would mean that a boss could trust her to give her the promotion. She's not getting a promotion, Karen, and she'll never get one here because the boss doesn't see her as a person of leadership. She's smart. She's taken the courses. She has everything she needs for a position of authority but she won't get one here. She would have to start fresh in a brand new company where she could walk in. And probably couldn't with people pleasing. Well, and that's it. And that was part of the message that she could get the job based on credentials, but that she actually wouldn't be good at the job. Yeah, she's got concepts. Yeah. Yeah, she's got the brains for the marks. That's it. Hmm. She doesn't have the skill set that goes with it. So her mom came through to say, you need to increase your emotional intelligence, the, these other tools, in order to actually apply for a job like this. And, and not only keep it, Kelly, like it. Mm-hmm. Because the other aspect is, is that you can get those jobs based on your skill set or based on your credentials, like school certifications. But if you don't have the right tools in your personality, you're going to hate the job even if they do keep you in it. Mm-hmm. So her mom ended that. That that ended up being our 90-minute session together. And so at the end of it, we like we got out of the room and we were just doing the receipt. She was doing payment. And the little conversation we had in those couple of minutes went like this. I had no idea seeing a psychic or a medium was going to give me tools. I had no idea that you were actually going to refer me to other people to help me. I just really thought this would be like going, and this is no offense to people at a psychic fair whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was like when you went to a psychic fair and they just said, you know, don't go on this trip or you're going to, your finances are going to be this, or you're going to have two more kids or you're going to go on a trip. She says, I just thought you're going to do shit like that. And she goes, I got so much more than I th- what I thought I was going to get. And she says, you gave me tools. You gave me answers. You answered the questions sometimes that I didn't even know that I should be asking. Mm-hmm. So am I allowed to come back? Mm. That question always shocks me. Yep, me too. I am always floored that someone says, am I allowed to come back? Yep. It's one of our most asked questions at the end of a session. I don't even know where it comes from. Me neither. If I try and think of like what belief system would make someone believe that they may not be allowed to come back, I don't yeah. even know where to go. Yeah, me neither. Because I I can't think of that I've ever seen that on a TV show. I don't know that if you've ever gone to a psychic fair, they say to you, and, and never come, come back. back. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I just, mean, I wish the asshole clients would ask it. That'd be nice. 
but they, they won't do that. You mean the abusive ones? Yeah. The ones who are just like mean and it's never enough. And they're like, mm. I wish, you know, and, and, I, and I mean that of the ones who maybe start that way and then can switch over partway through and become more respectful if they're like, so am I allowed to come back? Like, did we end that on good terms? Yeah. That, I could understand that question. Yes. If there was like a grand shift in behavior where we were okay. Yes. Because, I mean, we have a blacklist. Uh, yes, for people who are... Downright abusive. And, and, and with no intention to change. Mm -hmm. With none whatsoever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So anyway, the obvious answer was yeah. yes. And it sounds like she'd be someone to get work done. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoy when that type of client like Ella comes back because when they do, it's usually to ask the spirit guides directly what the contract is, what they're yeah. supposed to learn, what they were supposed to get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, they want toolkits and the guides come right through. And again, if as someone is listening going, well, that's therapy. No, we're, we always say we're not therapists. We channel the messages from the guides. So the guides could say simply, you're done. Whereas a therapist might not say, you're done, but give them a process. Mm -hmm. It is not the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is pure channeling from what her spirit is saying is written in that contract. And people have the choice whether to follow through and go with that or not. Mm -hmm. That's well, not up to us and not yeah. to, to infer anything or to try to persuade them. I remember years ago, one client saying to me, do you think just because you went through a divorce, you want everybody in the city to go through a divorce? You're just miserable? Yeah, but it sounds like you are. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but I said, like, no, like, why do you even think that? That's just like walking into a chiropractic office and saying, if you've adjust someone's left hip, are you just adjusting everybody's left hip? Like it, it doesn't even make sense. It's not personal to what we want for people. We mm -hmm. have to just truly listen to what the guides are saying and relay that. That's the job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, they're so one-dimensional in their thinking sometimes. Mm. And we've illustrated this in very nice ways in the sense that we've, I've given very loving, fun messages from a grandparent to a grandchild. I use this all the time. And they might sit there and go, well, yeah, isn't everyone's grandma nice and lovely? And it's like... Not mine. No. Like, I'm happy to deliver this message for you because yeah. I get to feel love from a grandparent for the first time in a long time. Yeah. You know, like, it's not, I don't, I don't channel that every grandfather is mean and yeah. self-centered because yeah. one of mine was. Or that every mother is a psychic medium just because yours is. <laughs> oh, your mom must be your best friend because, you know, mine is. Yeah. Like, oh. Right. Well. How I do they do their job well? Well, I don't know. To me, that's just a, maybe on some level a little bit of narcissism. Oh, totally that they can't They can't see outside of their own experience that other people are having a different experience, right? And are open to a new one. You got her. All right. Anyway, that was Ella's story. That, what a productive 90 minutes. Good for yes. her. Yes. Yeah. And an open session yeah. where... Also, somebody can hear that truly in an open session, she listened, she took in the messages, she asked questions. Open doesn't mean that you can't ask the guides questions. Yeah. And I wanted to illustrate that for people, mm -hmm. that truly Ella's session was open because she was open to listening to all of these things and worked her open session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've said, I mean, I say it in every single session that sometimes a message that we channel will bring up a question that you didn't originally have. Yeah. So if you're letting the guides sort of do the beginning of the steering, and then you're like, oh, I like where this is going. Can we really take it further? Mm -hmm. That's still open. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. I love these kind of sessions. Mm -hmm. I call them work sessions. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Anyway. Cool. We're all done today? We're done. Okay, excellent. So if you have questions or comments about today's show, you can email us at info at .com. Just a reminder that we do have our Sips of Sanity for March out. Um, that aired this previous week. The full episodes are available on patreon.com slash bysarlo. You can join us there. If you are listening from Patreon, thank you so much for joining us early and for all of your support. Uh, and if you're listening on your regular platform of podcasts, we appreciate that too. Have a great weekend.